Oh hi! Greetings, humans. Welcome back to the windmill full of corpses. This is what I'm excited about. So, this is Epica, Kingdom of Heaven, Part 3, The Antediluvian Universe. That's a pretentious name. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Okay, so I know this song. It's from the new Epica album, Omega. It's a monster of an album. It's over an hour long, 13 songs, symphonic metal with a lot of stuff in there. I love it. I love this this style, this Dutch symphonic metal style, a lot. And well, we've both heard the entire album, except for this song. I, I forced him not to listen to this song specifically because I wanted to introduce him to it on camera. So yeah, now I'm under test and you'll, you'll get to see me under pressure. Pressure. Yeah. Um, it's a 13 minute monster and it has six parts. It's one of the most pretentious things I've ever seen. Um, mm -hmm. Arguable, <laughs> one of them. Mm -hmm. um, not in a bad way, again, I like pretentious stuff. Well, I like everything you've done right. Okay. So, Epica, I just, before we do that, I just want to say that uh, this sort of long songs that Epica do, I, kn I know the holographic principle really well, so that's my only benchmark of reference. And I have heard uh, the Quantum Enigma, I think that was Kingdom of Heaven Part 2. Yeah, okay, and I don't remember that one so well. And this album compared to those two seems a bit more raw of a sounding comparison, so I'll probably like it a little bit less because I'm into that hi-fi stuff. But that, that's all that I can say in anticipation about how I expect this will be. And I guess I'll probably try to compare it a bit with what I know from Epica before. And let's see where it goes. Let's... Kind of weird that we're just looking at an image. What are you gonna do? Hmm. We're listening to an image. Is that throat singing? I think they had something like this going on on Kingdom of Heaven Part 1 as well. I know I probably you cut out my mind, but I have to comment on that because that this is definitely one of Epica's high points. Uh, the fact that they do their orchestras live, and I actually don't think there was anything from what we just heard that was programmed. And I, I also watched the yeah. I actually never thought about that, but I think that's all live instruments that are yeah, recorded there. Yeah, and I I know I watched the documentary on how they made the album. There were I think something like thirteen episodes on that. I watched the first eight. Yeah, and I think. Their keyboardist with Yoast with their producer actually recorded the orchestras and I don't remember where. So that was cool to see and I think those guys, I, I give them a lot of cred credit for making this album because through that documentary you can see them in the studio all the time. And the Mark and Simone and the rest of the people aren't there for a lot of the production. And I'm, I'm not meaning to say that anybody did 
more of the work than the other, but it was just cool to see see them work together on this stuff. And um, so I saw them at a show we went to. Back when yeah, shows were yeah, a yeah, thing. Yeah. They were in the audience. <laughs> yeah, I miss that. <laughs> let's let's go. Okay, there's a lot of cool rhythm twists in there that I really wanted to comment on. That's 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 really cool how they do that and how, how they sort of emphasize bits of that with the choir. Yeah. It really gives these highs in this sort of constant grind that comes with the kicks and everything. And yeah, it's, it's just really engaging, but this is what I meant earlier on about how I like the hi-fi sound on the others. I feel like that riff would just have a lot more meat in it if it had the sort of high high the hi-fi roaring production that we had on the holographic principle. Yeah, I think Maybe we should also just turn it a bit louder, but I actually yeah. don't think it's lacking power. Maybe that's just me. Anyway, let's keep going. It's a long song. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll try to talk less. So, go. I love that I already know what's coming and I just get to see your faces. 
I don't. <laughs> I'm basically with you now, I'm the audience. Okay, so, because you made that point, I'm pretty sure there's a storm coming, one way or another. <laughs> but I just, I don't, I never heard in any of their stuff before, as far as I remember, anything with this sort of raw, grand piano sound. So that was a really cool twist, and I think that's new. I'm not sure. Maybe if there are any hardcore Epica fans, you can tell us if they have like any, any like really I cool piano. I think they do. I think I saw grand piano in those studio documentaries. Yeah, but th th that was for this album. I meant earlier stuff. So, oh, yeah. I don't know, I don't know. They have had piano sound, but I don't know, it could just be keyboard, like regular keyboard. We will see. Okay. Go. Okay, that was a bunch of really cool dynamics. I like how a bit earlier on they kind of had growl and choir overlapping together, and then all of the little twists where he had a little bit of double kicks, and then some rhythm chops, and then a little, little double kicks. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of double kicks, and then some rhythm chops, and all that stuff. That, those were really cool dynamics. And it's really cool how he landed back into this sort of settled section. Yeah, so I love this drummer. Mm -hmm. And I love especially what he does, like, when he's got like a regular beat, like just a kick snare or something like that, and then the pedals just go in yeah. and out. Mm -hmm. that, that's one of my favorite things he does. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> it just keeps throwing new stuff at you. Okay, I have to comment because I have thoughts. I know it's... Okay, this vocal section gave me Imaginarium Scaretail vibes. Can you hear Yes, that? Yes, so, it's creepy. Epica fans, Nightwish fans probably have some overlap, so maybe you can tell us if you know 
that song from Night Witch Scare Tale, if you get that sort of vibe, this sort of theatrical twist in the vocals, that was really cool. And I think right before that, what we got was the Children's Choir. Yeah. Yeah. So that was also really cool. I love because the Children's Choir on this album. I think they recorded it in a church. I think. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We should probably document a little better these things, but maybe you can tell us if you know better. So, let's just go. Oh. That's my favorite part. Okay. I love two well solos. Okay, so that before we got into the solos were probably, was probably at least compositionally the most death metal I've ever heard Epica get. I think, they, I think we actually had blast beats on the drums. Yeah, they only, the only place I know blast beats in Epica before is Ascension, Dream State Armageddon. Oh yeah, I actually know that one, and it's yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. So, checks out. Uh, and I'm not sure, because I can't really remember, but is this a reprise from the beginning? Yes, it's okay. from part two. It's a multi-part song, now we just kicked part six and it reprises to part two, which was the first time the metal hit. Part one was just the intro. You'll have to tell me the titles of the six parts when we're done. Let's go. What do you think? <laughs> that was pretty epic. Well, it's epic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a pun almost everyone made. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's been overused so many times. Okay, so thoughts. I, uh, most of it I already said as the song was progressing, I guess, but 
this has been pretty impressive. I would say the fact that they went so heavy on the composition that a lot of the parts definitely uh, brought back what some of what maybe they lost with the mix from my perspective. So that was properly heavy a couple of moments in there. And the, the one part that I didn't comment on is this finale at the end going back into the choruses from the beginning. That was that was really cool way to finish. I also want to compare this a little bit with the holographic principle. I thought that was it's it's that was more of a progressive song. It it starts all slow and then evolves into this big song. Yeah, yeah. This one kind of takes you on the peaks right from the beginning and then goes all labyrinthic and it's kind of harder to follow and sort of map out in your head. I like how you say it goes labyrinthic. Did you see the, co the cover artwork? Right? Yeah, yeah, and I actually noticed a cool detail at the cover artwork. So the album is Omega, and I don't know if you noticed, you have this sort of entry in the labyrinth in the labyrinth, and someone looking inside, and on the right, mm -hmm. right on the stone, I think there's an alpha printing. So I think it's someone at the beginning of the journey, and probably Omega is the destination. I don't know. It's I don't a nice know. Theory. Yeah, it's definitely a cool theory. Mm -hmm. But what I got, because well, all their lyrics are like spiritual, inner seek, and stuff like that, and finding peace and whatever. Mm -hmm. What this album feels like to me as a whole, looking at the lyrics, is more like trying to find your way out of the maze. So the maze is kind of your head, mm -hmm. and then that, that's like, actually pretty appropriate. Yeah, it is pretty appropriate. Everyone's head is a maze, mm -hmm. and and. Basically, with this album, you're kind of trying to find your way out of it and reach your true self or something like that, I guess. Yeah, Epicats seem generally quite obsessed with true selves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're very enlightened. Mm -hmm. I, I like that about them, but it also can get a bit... Um, repetitive. Like, they've been doing it for three albums now, at least. So far, it's working. Yeah, I guess. I still have to probably digest this album a little bit till I can fully pronounce myself on that, but generally, this is... Pretty epic. Yeah. Uh, now, you said you wanted me to tell you the titles to the parts. Yeah, let's do that fast, because this is getting really long. Yeah, let me see if I remember them, actually. I think first part is Atman. So okay. that's actually got something to do with Atma. Okay. Yeah. Um, second part is called Sri Yantra, or something like that. I have no idea what it means. Third part is called The Halls of Amenti. Mm -hmm. I have no idea who he is. Mm -hmm. Fourth part, that's where the growls kick in, mm -hmm. is called Duality. Okay. Fifth part is called... The Chikai Bardo, The Afterlife Realms. Okay. Which is too pretentious for me to process. Well, it's The Afterlife Realms, which I guess it's kind of inconvenient that you reach the afterlife before you reach Omega, but anyway... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And then the last part is something like The Flower of Life or whatever. Anyway, it's a six-part monster mm -hmm. and it's a journey. Okay. It was a journey. Yeah. So, what do you think of long songs? And long videos with our faces in it. Yeah. And what do you think of Epica and of this sort of symphonic metal? And is it your style and do you have more suggestions in this area? Or others. Yeah, or others. Everything's welcome, of course. Um, so yeah, drop your suggestions. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I think those are the three things. Like, share, and subscribe. That's, and that's the holy trinity. It said something about a holy trinity. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So, like, share, subscribe. That's the holy tr trinity. Yeah. And, and you can give it to us. Yes! You have the power to give us the holy trinity. So, we, we really appreciate you being here. And if you're actually stayed to watch us through this long-ass video, then you have our eternal gratitude. We'd love to see you in the comments. And um, uh, see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.